What's going on everybody? My name is Derek and welcome to my channel. So today I want to discuss depression and you know my history with it. Uh, won't dig into every detail of it because we don't have enough time but uh, I want to use this opportunity to not only talk about some depression that I've experienced and what I feel about it and what I know about it but I think it's important right out of the gate that if I'm going to do a video on depression, which is, is my first one, we need to talk about the stigma behind it. You know, it's called mental health stigma. And it's when, you know, people will shame you uh, for your mental illness or if you say you want to get help, emotional help for emotional distress or you're seeking help for anxiety or depression or bipolar disorder, that's another stigmatized um, name and and uh, disease PTSD these poor soldiers that come in uh, from war who are just traumatized and deal with insane amounts of PTSD um, can sometimes be looked at like they're weak or something I would say it's better now but think of the gentlemen from world wars and the Vietnam War and they called it shell-shocked you know, they had different terms for it, but that was all PTSD and they weren't getting any help and they just had to not talk about the war at all. They just kind of just never talked about it. I've heard it so many times. Yeah, my dad was in World War Two, but I didn't know anything about it because he did not talk about it. He would not answer any questions about it. It's like it never existed. It's probably because it was painful for him to talk about it. <laughs> so and holding it inside might have probably taken away from th this guy's life if he wouldn't have had that much stress on him from just holding it all inside. So it's crucial that uh, we talk about it because we don't want to be victim to stigmatization because that's not going to make things any better. It's important that mental health is is out there and, and people are screaming it from the mountaintops because so many people suffer from it and there's ways to get better from it, whether it's medication, therapy, what have you. So um, here are just a few ways to, you know, how we can fight the stigma. First and foremost, and, and why I'm doing this right now, is to talk openly about mental health. You just got to say it. Just talk about it and not worry about what people are going to think about you. Uh, educate yourself and others. Be conscious of language. Again, we don't want to say get over it. You know, <laughs> your life isn't bad. Well, right now it is. I understand that doesn't help when you say that to me, but I'm not feeling good right now. Well, then just fucking get over it. Whatever. <laughs> you know, that's not good language for this. Encourage equality between physical and mental illness. Uh, compassion for those with mental illness. Choose empowerment over shame. That's the big one. That's that's you. Just you feel the shame. You're hearing it come your way, and you just empower yourself. And you're like, you know, I'm bigger than you. I'm, I'm bigger than this. I'm an adult, and I'm going to not let your judgment, you know, you know, turn me away from getting help. And then just be honest about treatment. Don't worry about it. If someone says, oh, well, you know, are you on medication? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Well, I don't agree with that. Well, then don't take any. <laughs> you know, it's none of their business if you take medication. <clears throat> if you feel like you don't want to tell them, that's up to you. You know, I mean, it's up to you if you don't want to talk about what medications you're on. But if you're doing it because you're afraid of, of getting judged because of it, then that's something that uh, I would want everyone to work on. You know, it's okay. Right now, as I speak into this microphone, I take a medicine called Lamictal, which is for bipolar disorder, which I've been diagnosed. Bipolar disorder 2. Um, <clears throat> so, there you go. <laughs> I'm being honest about my treatment. I've seen the same therapist for 10 years, and he's done wonders for me. Pretty much saved my life when he drove me to rehab. Uh, that's a whole other story there. But um, but talk about it. You have to talk about it. 
The other, the other thing that makes depression and anxiety and PTSD, and, you know, all this mental health um, issues is, in my opinion, I call it like the invisible disease. I don't know what kind of, you know, modern science they're doing up on Mars right now. <clears throat> the last I checked, you can't take a blood test or urinate in a cup, get lab results two hours later, and they're like, yep, you're depressed. You're actually about 30% depressed. So we're going to give you this exact amount milligram dose of this medicine that will fit perfectly against the percentage of depression you are dealing with. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You know, you have to sit with a therapist, psychotherapist, a psychologist or a psychiatrist rather, an actual doctor, <clears throat> and they're just going to ask you questions. They'll put you through a survey, and based on your answers and the information they give you, that's when they determine, okay, well, sounds like you're suffering from some depression. Would you like to take some medication? And they'll give they'll run you through the options and how those will, how those work. But you can't you can't just uh, take a test and and get a reading. Yep, you're depressed. So that makes it tricky too. And some people are just afraid to go to a doctor and and uh, and talk about it. So um, I've been on three different antidepress antidepressants spanning from when I was like 18 until 2015, maybe. Um, I had been on Prozac when I was younger. And then in my mid-20s, I was on Effexor. And then in my early 30s, I was on Lexapro for a while. Um, in all situations, uh, I... The antidepressants would make me manic. It would, it would definitely lift me up, but too much. So when I was in rehab, yes, I went to rehab May of 2014 for alcohol. I, gosh, talk about getting tested as far as being asked questions and, and being put through tests and, uh, you know, and just being psychoanalyzed like crazy, uh, they determined that I, I fell into the category of bipolar for all the reasons you would. But then one of the, one of the reasons that was really helpful to the, for them to know that I could be bipolar is because typically if you're bipolar, then antidepressants is actually bad for you. Because it lifts you too high. And, it's what, and I was like, oh, yeah, I get manic. I would get manic on antidepressants. Well, bipolar is what I would, I call it like a thermostat, right? So you set the temperature on your thermostat. Summertime, you set it AC at 70 degrees. Okay, so the AC kicks on. It get, cools the place down. The room temperature now is 68. It turns off. And the room kind of heats up again. Then once it hits 70, 71, it kicks back on. So it keeps you 68 to 71 degrees, right? Well, bipolar, the thermostat's out of whack. So sometimes you can get really low depression where you have that thermostat set, but it's getting colder outside and the heat's not kicking on, Right. The thermostat's broken. You have it set for the heat to turn on at 67 degrees, but the inside of your apartment's 55. It's getting depressed, and that thermostat's just not working. It's not taking that temperature back up. And then all of a sudden, it'll fire, and, poof, and the thermostat kicks in, just like kind of just jolts back into place, and then the heat comes in, and it brings it back up to temperature. Um, or in the summertime, the AC is set to 70 degrees. All of a sudden, the thermostat goes out, and now it's getting hotter. 75, 80. It's just hot. Why is the AC not working? Well, the thermostat is off. It's broken. So you're overheating. You're, you're getting manic. You're just... And your self-thermostat, your self-control, the, 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 the chemical balance in you 
can't handle and can't control the temperature rising. And I'm, I don't mean like fever temperature. I, I'm trying to make analogies here for temperature to like mood, depression, or by, or mania, being manic or anxious. That's that's the other one too. So um, I, that's how I look at bipolar. It's like a thermostat. So you struggle with antidepressants because antidepressant is trying to push you from the floor up. It's trying to bring you up because you're depressed. But if that thermostat isn't working properly, it will push you right through the roof. <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll melt the house down um, and just make you super manic. And that's why you hear a lot of stories about people get on, on uh, medication and spending a lot of money or doing uh, very um, outlandish things, uh, families, personality changes, um, Sometimes you get people that have to do some self harm because I guess they can't handle the the, the manicness to it, but uh, but that's why you go see a doctor, <laughs> and that's why you see a therapist, and they will figure out exactly uh, as best they can based on the information you give them. Again, why it's important to be honest about what you're feeling and what you're going through. Um, they will test you on some things like let's try this. Well, then that's another game because now you're you're waiting to see if this medicine is going to work. It's not like a pain medicine. It doesn't just happen overnight. It has to get into your system. You're going to feel some side effects at first. Then you get your balance get your and get what's called the baseline. Okay, well, now how do you feel? Well, I'm still not feeling good. I had, nothing has really changed in three weeks. Okay, they might up up your milligrams or they change your medicine, so on and so forth. So um, that is stuff that you can just go see a doctor about. Um, I feel unqualified to explain <laughs> the medications any more than I have. But um, but that's what I take is Lamictal for bipolar. Uh, and it's done wonders for me. I finally found something that uh, works for me. Uh, what's interesting is with antidepressants, often you feel some side effects. Oh, you feel like you're on medicine. Uh, but with Lamictal, I haven't had an issue. Uh, I don't feel like I'm on it. I don't feel like I'm taking anything. Uh, so that's another, that's another place where you can, you can fall into a trap is I feel great. No, I'm fixed. So I don't need the, this pill anymore. Not true. You're fixed because the pill's working. When you take the pill away, then you're not fixed anymore. And in fact, if you just quit taking your antidepressants, you'll be worse from it. You'll get sick. You know, you'll you'll go through a pretty bad withdrawal. And uh, I went through a withdrawal on a Fexer that was pretty bad because I was an idiot and just quit it. And I was drinking while taking it. I just wasn't doing the right things. I was not behaving when on that antidepressant. But uh, you want to be careful of that. Don't fall into that lie and that trap that you're fixed. I feel great. I don't need this stuff anymore. No, you're feeling great because you're on that stuff. You're on that medicine. Uh, so you just have to, you know, learn to to uh, just live with it and, and take it habitually and just stick to it. Because easily I could have been like, Years ago, Lamictal, this, okay, I'm done with this. I'm good. I'm not feeling anything. But you know what? I've been sober for seven and a half years. I've started a business. I've, I've you know, been a better dad, um, you know, more focused on life, not running away from fears and, and, you know, always continuing to work on myself. A lot of that might have to be, you know, might be because I've been on medicine. I got, I found the right medicine for me. And it's working, but they couldn't detect what I needed through a urine sample. And that's kind of the point I'm getting at is you've got to talk about it. Don't be afraid to talk about these things. If you're feeling down and you know what the depression feels like and you are just going through it and you're battling it, it's so easy to want to isolate. I'm an isolator. I isolate too. I draw the, dr the curtains darken the place down and, and, and just hide. And I'm all, I'm, I'm naturally an antisocial person too. 
So that doesn't help. But if you are if you're in a dark place, get outside, be, be in a lit place, breathe the air, just sit in the sun, get some vitamin D. You don't have to talk to anybody. Cry. Just cry it all out. Don't be afraid to cry. Cry. You know, that's that's healthy. Just get it out. Um, and then go see a doctor. See a therapist. Because the therapist is also important because taking medicine, but that's only part of it. In my story, not only have I found the right medicine for me, but I've also found the right therapist. And I see him lately for the last few years pretty much every week. Uh, there were some periods where I was a little less, but I started seeing him in 2012. So now not, you get the medicine to help you balance and, and, and balance the chemicals in your brain. Boom, key. But let's talk about the reasons why you're feeling depressed. You want to start expressing yourself and exhausting that through therapy because you're talking about this stuff. You can journal. You want to get the stuff out still. The, me- the medicine is only part of the solution. So the number one thing is talking about it. And that's what I felt like talking about because I wish more people would not stigmatize this. So there it is, y'all. <laughs> uh, thank you for all the amazing feedback I got from my previous video about alcohol. Uh, that really struck a nerve, and uh, I can understand why, and there's definitely going to, be, going, going to be a lot of videos about alcohol. I could talk for hours about alcohol, and there will be more coming. Um, but thank you for all the views and all the awesome comments. Um, it does mean a lot to me. Uh, it makes it easier for me to come on here and do this, uh, which is very unnatural for me still. Uh, this one was a little more difficult for me to talk about, you know, because of stigma. But here I am trying. And that's because of all y'all's support on, you know, listening and engaging with me and encouraging me to continue to do this and what I do and in ways I can help you. So that is all I can ask for. So until next time, y'all, you all have a great day. Thank you.